I'm building a 10 by 12 shed and I want it to be sturdy and have great drainage. So site selection in the foundation is really important. We're gonna use this area right here and I wanna go ahead and start laying things out and see how much I have to level and then we can start in with the wood. So I'm going ahead and started laying out the footprint of the foundation and I spray painted a little black mark right down here at my feet, about 10 feet off of this fence. And then I've got another one over here that is 14 feet away. So I want the foundation to be 14 foot by 12 foot and that'll be two feet wider than the total shed, which will give me a foot overhang on each side. So now I'm just gonna use this level. We'll see how level the land is. I don't have to be exact here. I'm just trying to get a feel for it because we'll really level out the gravel base. But I've got a seven foot level and it looks like that's about level right there. So it looks like it's about a three inch drop halfway down. And I'm gonna check what the drop is in the next seven feet. All right, so that looks like it's about two and a half inches on this back seven feet. So in total, I've got about five and a half to six inches of drop. So I need to bring a lot of that dirt down here and get it just enough even that we can lay down the gravel. And that's where we'll get our finished level and be really precise. When you're trying to figure out where to put your shed, site selection is so important and you really wanna find the most level ground that you can. And you really don't want the difference in your site to be more than the height of the timber you're using. I'm gonna be using four by sixes on edge, which is five and a half inches. And when I look over here, this is 12 and a half inches off the ground, but back over the other side, it is six inches off the ground. So that means a six and a half inch drop between the two sites, which would mean that I would need another beam to come in here and make up that difference so I could backfill it and have a little retaining wall more than just trim. So the flatter you can pick your site, the less material you're gonna have to use and the less hard work you're gonna have to do digging it out. All right, so I moved the site a little bit and after a ton of measuring, I think this is about as good as we're gonna get. And I do think we're gonna have to bring in some extra timbers around this low edge because there's just too much change in elevation across the site. But I'm gonna go ahead and start digging out here before I lose sunlight and see if I can level some of this out so we can hit it tomorrow. So yesterday I finished removing all the grass. I didn't do any leveling, but I got that off because you don't want the grass there because it will die and then compress after it and you wanna have a nice firm foundation. I also have the string lines all laid out. Let me show you. I've got the pleasure of this site not only sloping down, but it also has a nice hump in the middle. So as you look at the string line here, I leveled everything out and I wanted to get it as close to the surface at the highest point as I could. And then that way I'll have to do the least amount of buildup at the lowest areas. So putting the top of the timbers level with my highest point, is just gonna reduce the amount of work I have to do for the rest. But now I have to dig out the trenches, start setting these, getting them leveled, and then we can level the center. All right, a few tips on digging. One, make sure you dial 811 so you don't hit any lines. Ours was already marked, so I know I'm good here. Two, it's best to dig after it's rained in the past few days. It's not rained for weeks here. And three, do it right after your kids have done something really bad. Like I'm talking steal the car, maybe like some liquor cabinets, I don't know. And then their punishment, dig the hole. Cause this is not fun, but we're almost getting there. I've got the trench dug for the timbers and I'm gonna show you what I did because this was like four hours of work. So we're really gonna dig in. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Down here, we are almost even with the ground. So the top of the timber is gonna be right here next to the ground. And from the string line, I dug down seven and a half inches so that I can have two inches of gravel and then my five and a half inch four by six on edge. Now, as the yard slopes down here, you can see the trench gets shallower and shallower until this point right here. That's where it starts going more than five and a half inches above where the finished level is gonna be. And that means I need to fill in that space with another timber. When you choose gravel, it's important to get the right type. This is what they call three quarter inch clean gravel. They also call it number 56, number 58. I don't know what it is, I have it right there. But this is the kind of gravel that you want because you don't want to have paver base or anything like that because it is too tightly packed and it's not gonna drain well. And it also is nice and jagged, so it's gonna compact together. If you get something like river rocks or something that is rounded, then those aren't really gonna hold together. The nice jagged edges on here, make sure it's really tight and compact, but it will drain really well.
As I'm putting in the gravel, I'm making it easy on myself and I'm using a two by six as a stand-in for the four by six because four by sixes are very heavy. So I'm going ahead and just using this as a reference and seeing where it lines up to the yellow line. So I'm just trying to get it pretty close and I'll do the final adjustments when I have the seven foot level and the real timbers. The gravel is all in and I am losing daylight really quickly, so I'm gonna pack up. Tomorrow we'll lay down the timbers, level this out, fill it up with gravel, and then I can start building the wooden base. So here are the four by sixes that I'm gonna be putting in there and I'm gonna start with that lower level, obviously, and I'm gonna start with the long one that'll end up being on the left side. So I got the piece here, I'm gonna measure it up and make my first cuts. All right, it's getting a little bit windy out here, so don't mind the little dead cat on my chest. Hopefully the audio is still pretty good. But uh, I cut through the four by six and I had to make it in two cuts because the blade of the circular saw is not deep enough to do it all in one cut. I also need to drill some holes through the four by sixes and I'm going to use a 9 16 inch auger bit, which has a little self auger on it. And I'm also gonna have to drill from the top and the bottom because this is not a full five and a half inches that I would need to go through. So I'm gonna mark from the top, then mark from the bottom and drill from each side. And I should have a hole that's pretty well aligned. Maybe it worked. All right. I got the first timber laid in here and I'm just gonna check for level. We're actually pretty close, but I just need to add a little bit in here. And then we'll start laying out the rest over here and see where we can line up because we're gonna be anchoring all these with half inch rebar. All right. I cut down the next small piece and we're gonna just put that right in here and I've already leveled it. So we should be good to go. All right. I cut down a couple of pieces of rebar and now I'm just gonna hammer these in and anchor this into the ground. I'm gonna leave this rebar proud and then when I put the next one on, I'll have the hole drilled and then actually put the timber on top of the rebar instead of the rebar through the timber. Not sure if that's a great way to do it, but that's what I'm doing. Also, this whole thing got a little cattywampus, so I'm not exactly up against my string lines uh, and everything's kind of curved, but we are square and that's what's important. And so I'm just gonna kind of adjust things as we go. And this is just to hold the gravel, so I'm probably going way overkill anyway. I've got that base layer in now, and now basically I can just rest in the four pieces. And if you have a flat level surface, you've skipped a whole lot of work and just go straight to this part. Now, if you're working by yourself and handling these, a little cart is gonna be wonders, and you can just work one edge at a time. All right, I've gotta lift that other end on top of the rebar, so I'm gonna put a little spacer here at this end so that it'll kind of be at the same height because I think it's gonna be tricky to get it down on the rebar if it's at an angle, so. Not sure how this is gonna go, <laughs> we'll see. All right, that actually worked pretty good. As I'm putting this timber in back here, it just keeps wanting to twist on me. So I actually screwed this two by six with it. So I'm gonna push this forward as I start driving in the rebar. And that's gonna make sure it's straight up and down once it's sunk. <laughs> Easier said than done, by the way. Put some body weight on this. Oh, there we go. Use my booty. <sighs> All right, you probably can't see me. We've got three cell phone lights here because none of my work lights are at the new property yet. So, <laughs> but I'm putting this thing in before I leave tonight. So here we go. All right. Ta da! <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. We will uh, call that a night after I hammer this in. 
Having the opportunity to get this property and share memories with our kids as we make it our own was a big selling point for us. And I know it's not the most glamorous topic, but Susan and I both got term life insurance when we had our first kid and we were in our original house. Because with a new family, we didn't want either of us to have to deal with the huge burden of a mortgage debt, as well as the expenses of raising kids on your own if something happened to either one of us. Getting life insurance used to be a lengthy process, but Ethos, the sponsor of today's video, makes it fast and easy. You can just answer a few health questions on their online application, get a quote in seconds, and apply for a policy within minutes. And you don't have to get any time-consuming medical exams or blood work to get started. Now you might be surprised how affordable life insurance really is, especially if you get in early. So if you're interested in learning more about Ethos and getting a free life insurance quote, I'll have a link down below in the description. I did manage to get the timbers on last night, but right now I'm gonna lock these in with some six inch deck screws and I'll have one through the end here and then one down into the one below it on each side because I don't have the rebar on these ends. And that should hold it really nicely. And the next step is I need to level out all this dirt. So you can see down here, we've got a big gap over where we have the higher walls. And then up here, we have a really small gap. So I'm gonna take all the dirt from up here and move it down and see where that gets us. And the goal is to have four inches from the dirt to the top of the timbers. And that's where we'll put our gravel. To make this a little bit easier because it's kind of hard to eyeball it, I'm gonna measure down four inches around all of those timbers and then do a chalk line so I have a nice visual representation of what that four inches should look like. All right, now just gotta do some digging. As I'm shoveling this around, I'm trying to rake it flat and about every inch or two of dirt that I put up here, it's all gonna be loose. So you wanna use a tamper to make sure that it gets down solid because you don't want that settling after we put in the gravel and the shed on top. We want this to all be nice and compact. Again, huge pain in the butt. If you rent a compactor, that would be amazing, but um, we're using a Brad Pactor. So here we go. All of our dirt is level and about four inches underneath the top of the timbers. So now I'm gonna put some weed fabric in and basically that's just gonna to help to obviously keep the weeds out, but also more importantly, so that the gravel just doesn't sink down into the dirt. It's gonna help prevent that a bit. I'm gonna staple it to the sides here and then I'll overlap it about six inches and then just go through and roll it out. Instead of using fabric staples to keep this down, I'm just gonna put a little bit of gravel on top there. That'll hold it down from the wind, and then that way you don't have to waste any of those landscaping staples and makes it faster. So I neglected to think about this is a 12 inch opening and I was using four inch landscape fabric, so I overlapped it. Also, I didn't do it exactly straight. So now I'm open about a one foot strip. So what I'm gonna do is just extend this half the distance, cut it in half, and then kind of piecemeal two pieces in there. So maybe think about that. If you could get the three foot rolls, then maybe that would be easier or four foot, six inch rolls. I don't know. Anyway, that's what we're gonna do. So I highly recommend having a dump cart like this one. I bought this one a few years back. This is the Gorilla Cart. I bought my own money, it is awesome. And it is worth its weight in gold, or in this case, gravel. All right, we've made, uh, I don't know, eight or nine trips and we are about halfway through. So all the landscape fabric is covered up and so we probably have somewhere around two inches. I'm gonna go ahead and tamp it down because if you try to tamp four inches of rock all at one time, it's gonna be a little bit harder. So I'll give it one good tamp, then we'll finish up with the rest, start leveling. And I've changed my recommendation. It is not to get a Gorilla Cart. Gorilla Carts are amazing. What the tip is, and this is the best tip I can ever tell you of any of the foundation work, is don't get the gravel delivered right there. Get it delivered in here after you've made your form. I ordered the gravel too early. They had to dump it in the yard. I could have saved a whole day in, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 1,022 trips with that. But that is two yards of gravel and it is pretty much all done. I'm gonna tamp it down and then we'll be ready for the base tomorrow. All right, I've done some tamping on the gravel, but I wanna make sure it is nice and level. So I actually found this 16 foot two by four from where we tore down the uh, butcher shop in there in the 
in the shop. And now I'm gonna use this to kind of screed along and just push things and then we'll get some tamping. And that way we'll make sure everything is nice and level. Now I'm gonna be building the base on four by four skids. And that means that we'll be able to move it around if we ever need to put it in a different spot. But my goodness, I will never move it because I did a lot of work on that base. <laughs> so I still have the four by fours here. These are 12 footers because we're gonna have 12 foot wide, but these are actually coming in at 12 foot one inch. So are the two by sixes. So I'm gonna have to actually cut an inch off of every one. And then I'm also gonna put a little bevel on the end of these and I'll show you in a second. All right, this is the better way to cut the bells. I'm just gonna mark in two and a half inches here. Now I've got my saw set to 45 degrees and then I can just make the cut. For the base of the shed and the joist, I'm gonna be using two by sixes and these are also pressure treated. I've got a bunch of 12 footers here because I could not find them in 10 foot. So I will be using full 12 foot for the front and the back. And then in between, there will be 10 footers, but I'm gonna use the off cuts to help strengthen in between the joists, which you'll see. But it would be more efficient if you could just find 10 footers. I'm gonna start laying out the skids and put them about four foot apart because I'm using four of them over 12 feet. And we'll adjust these in a minute once I start putting everything together. Right, I've got these guys spaced out, not four foot, they're just evenly spaced. It's actually like three feet and four inches. But now I'm checking for level and all of these look good. This is great. And I know that there's gonna be a little bit of raise up on some of these because I know that the four by fours have a little bit of bow to them. So I'm just looking to be in the general ballpark. That's great. I've got contact on all three of these, which means that they are all nice and even. Now we can start building out the frame. Now we're just gonna build our perimeter and I'm gonna start with the front board and one of the side ones. To attach everything together, I'm just gonna be using some three inch deck screws. Now, if you have a framing nailer, that is another way to go. I don't have a framing nailer and a box of screws is only uh, 35 or 40 bucks. So we're gonna do it this way. Now, before I put the backboard on, I'm gonna drop it down right here in front of the front one because it's already nice and standing up and solid. And I'm gonna butt them up together and now I'm gonna mark where all my inner joists are gonna go. And I wanna make sure they're laid out so that when I put the plywood on here, that the edge of the plywood will hit on the center of one of the boards. So it's important you get the right layout. And also we are gonna have plans for this build. They won't be available till the end, but this is one of those things that you definitely wanna make sure that you get right because it'll be a pain in the butt when you put on the plywood later. So to lock our frame into square, I'm going to attach the first skid and I'm gonna drill some countersink holes here so that when I put the screw in, it's gonna have a lot of purchase down there. Now I'm gonna measure for square. I'm gonna measure the diagonals of each side. If they're equal, that means it's square. If not, I'll have to adjust them. All right, we're just over 188 inches here and right about 187 on there. So this other side needs to come in about a half inch. So I'm gonna put my tape measure on the long edge and I'm gonna knock this corner in until it reaches 187 and a half. All right, 187 and a half. Oops, I was at 187 and a half, I should've stopped. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, back at it this morning and a real quick note. I know you've seen me having some evenings I've not been doing full days on this and we're actually here in the morning today, but most of the days before it's been after lunch because we've been doing things in the morning. So it's not taking as many days as it looks like, even though it is a lot of work. But now I'm gonna start putting in the joist on these marks that I did earlier. And when I'm putting these in, I'm gonna sight down them and you wanna have the crown up. So if it has a little curve to it, you want that to be on the top side. I'm gonna put these all in and attach them on this side and then come around to the other side and screw them all in over there. Some of these joists were pretty warped and they had a nice big bow on them. So I'm gonna be putting in some bracing. When I cut these down to 10 foot, I had some leftovers. So you can see on this one right here, this is almost touching. But then if I go all the way down here to the end, we've got about a three quarter inch gap. So putting these here in between, it's gonna add strength, but it's also just going to straighten everything up. So when we're putting down the plywood, we'll make sure that we're hitting the joists. For the sheathing, I'm using three quarter inch RTD sheathing, which is basically like a CDX. It's not exterior grade plywood, but it is exposure grade plywood. So it's fine if it gets out here, it gets a little bit of rain on it, but you do wanna dry it in and not have it out in the elements for extended time. 
I'm gonna lay this down perpendicular with the joists. I'm gonna start by screwing down the perimeter and you wanna do every six inches on the perimeter and every 12 inches on the field. But I'll do the perimeter first, then we can run some chalk lines where the joists are and do everything on the inside. Now this next piece should be right at four feet. I'm gonna butt it up to the previous piece, snap a chalk line, then I'll cut that off. I'll use the off cut down there on the other end. And you can see right here on the seam where these line up, this is exactly what we want. We want that seam landing right in the middle of one of these joists so that you can screw into it from both sheets. The nice thing about a 10 by 12 is that you can get it all out of four sheets of plywood and then just have a little two foot by four foot off cut. So I'm gonna cut this little last piece. We'll screw everything down. We'll be looking good. To find where to put the screws in the field and find the joist, I'm just gonna do a chalk line and I'm gonna look at the screws of where I screwed the joist in. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'll just do that on every joist and then tie in all my screws. Now this is about as strong as a base as I think I could have made and it's gonna be a great foundation for the shed that we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna have that video queued up for you right there when it's available. A big thank you to the FTBT Builders Club. Until next time, I'm Brad. Get out there and build something awesome.